I'm going to show you how to find the real roots and find possible real roots. So sometimes uh, we can't factor it out because we don't know any factors to start with and we can't do the grouping or, or factoring a greatest common factor or something like that. And when that happens, we're going to use the possible real roots. And I'll show you how to do that, okay? When you know how to do these guys right here, you're good to go. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to try to factor to, to find the roots. if we can. And when we get to a point where we can't do that, I'll show you how to uh, find the possible real roots. So this guy right here, they all have x's in them, so obviously I can factor out an x. They also are all divisible by 3, so I'm going to factor out a 3x to the third. When I divide this by 3x to the third, I'm left with x squared. When I divide this by 3x to the third, I'm left with 6x. When I divide this by 3x to the third, I'm left with 9. This guy to me, it's obvious, is a, a perfect square trinomial, but in case it's not, and what I normally see people do is they lose this part right here. So make sure you don't lose that part. In case this is not, I'm going to do the box method. So my first term goes in here. My last term goes in here. Multiply these together. I need two things that multiply to this and add to this. So it's going to be 3 and 3. So I'm going to have 3x, 3x. Factor out this way, a 3. Factor out this way, an x. This way, x. This way, 3. So my parentheses are going to be x plus 3, x plus 3. If any part of these equals 0, then I'm multiplying by 0. So each part set equal to 0 will give me the answer. So this I would divide by 3, which gives me x cubed equals 0. Cube rooted it gives me x equals 0. This I would subtract 3, gives me x equals negative 3. Subtract 3 gives me x equals negative 3. So I'm going to list this in my roster notation, which is 0, negative 3, negative 3. But this guy showed up twice, so I don't want to put it right twice. I want to actually put 0, negative 3. And I would say multiplicity of 2 on negative 3. Now I'm not going to make you guys do that unless I ask. Tell me that there's multiplicity, okay? So multiplicity means that it happened more than once. And you would just say how many times. So multiplicity of 2 meaning it happened twice on negative 3, okay? Do another example here. One of the things that's really important is to make sure that you get it equal to 0. So I'm going to get this equal to 0 by adding 36. Now I'm going to factor this by the <coughs> box method. My first term goes in here. My last term goes down here. Multiply these together. Now I need two things that multiply to 36x to the fourth and add to negative 13x squared. So my numbers are going to both be negative. It's going to be, uh, what, 6 and 6. That doesn't seem like I can do one. Four and nine. Negative 4x squared, negative 9x squared. That's what's going to go in right here. Now I'm going to see what can I factor out of these is going to be a 4. Since it's touching the negative, it is negative. What can I factor out of these is an x squared. What can I factor out of these is an x squared. And these is a 9. Since it touches the negative, it is a negative. So in my parentheses, I'm going to have x squared minus 9 and x squared minus 4. Now both of these are perfect square, perfect, the difference of two squares. So the difference of two squares, if you remember, means that I break it up into a plus and a minus. Same thing on both of these. So I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. This one I'm going to subtract three. This one I'm going to add 3. 
subtract two, add two. And those are all my solutions. So that's what we're looking for on these guys right here, okay? You gotta go multiple steps. On this one I had to go two steps. So I factored it out once, and then I had to factor it out again. So a lot of times you're gonna have to go multiple steps. So be careful, okay? This one's four terms. I'm just gonna factor by grouping again. So this guy I can get out an x squared, which leaves me with x minus nine. This guy I can get out a 27, which leaves me with x minus one. So that didn't actually work. So I'm gonna have to reorganize them. No, that's not gonna work either. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to, if I reorganize them, yes, I'm going to reorganize them. So I'm going to reorganize them to be x to the third minus 27x minus 9x squared minus 27 equals zero. Does that help me? 27. That didn't help me either, oh no. Okay, so what am I gonna do here? Well, since I don't know, this time I'm gonna use the possible factors. The possible factors, how it works, is you're gonna think of it as, you're gonna think of it as the coefficient here is P, no, is Q, and the coefficient, the constant here is P. Your possible factors are all the factors of P over all the factors of Q, okay? So all the factors of P are, are 1, 3, 9, 27. But they can also be positive or negative, so it's going to be plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus. And then all the factors of this, this is really one, so it's gonna be plus or minus one. Those are my only possibilities. So I'm gonna do all of these over all of these. Since it's one, it's gonna be super simple. It's just gonna be these numbers right here. These are my possible factors. So I'm gonna use synthetic division to see which one actually works for me. So x to the third is one, negative nine x squared is negative nine, 27x is 27, and negative 27 is negative 27. I'm gonna start with negative one, so I'm gonna put a positive one right there and see what happens. Bring the one down and multiply, add and multiply, add and multiply, and this gave me a remainder, so this one didn't work. So now I'm gonna try negative one. Bring it down, multiply, add, and multiply, add, and multiply, and this is going to give me a remainder. So the one is out, now I'm going to try three. This is a long process, that's why we want to use this last if we can't do anything else. Multiply, add, multiply, add, and multiply. And that did give me a remainder of zero. Oh, I'm sorry, I was off the screen. Which means that one of my factors is x minus three. And what's left when I do that, remember we do one less exponent here. So we started with an exponent of three, so this is gonna be one x squared minus six x plus nine. Still equals zero. Well, this is a perfect square trinomial as well. So I know that it's gonna be x minus three, x minus three, Negative three times negative three gives me positive nine. Negative three plus negative three gives me negative six. And I really need to remember to not forget the stuff that I already had out front. So I'm gonna set each of these equal to zero. And then solve. So I'm gonna add three here, which gives me three. Add three here, which gives me three. Add three here, which gives me three. So my real factors are, or my real solutions are only three. 
with multiplicity of 3. And that's it. That's all we're really doing on these guys. Um, these possible factors are really important, so we want to make sure that we can do those.